What's going on guys, Mr. Enforcer, welcome back to another video, and today we're going to continue the Illinois Dynasty here in Season 2, as we're going to play host to the number 13 team in the country, Michigan State. This is going to be our toughest test of the season, so we'll see how we do against them. I'm excited, man, this is going to be our third straight home game before we take a road trip, so let's see what we got in store for Michigan State. Alright, of course, here is the stats, of course, for both teams, you can take a pause at it and look. Uh, a couple things I look, we're number two in the whole nation at uh, defensive points and uh, number one at defensive rushing, so a lot of stuff to look there as well. Uh, we're top 20, finally, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, offensive points per game at 38. Of course, here's the top players for us, and here's the top players for them as well. And of course, here's the injury report as well. NCAA Football 14 pregame show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. Some of the great stadiums, great traditions, great uniforms in college football. Time to put them on display. Early season action in the Big Ten. That's going to do it for us here on the pregame show. NCAA Football 14 action coming at you right now. Fred Nessler and Kirk Herbstreit. of the University of Illinois in Champaign. Let's head down to the coin toss now. It's brought to you by Coke Zero. Real Coca-Cola taste and zero calories. Enjoy everything. Here we are, the kick off the game. Michigan versus Michigan State versus Illinois. As the kickoff will go for a touchback and we'll start the game. Here we are, second and six. First possession of the game for Michigan State is the handoff with Simpson. Left side of the field, he's breaking tackles, making guys miss all the way down near the 40-yard line. It is a 31-yard rush by Simpson. First and 10, another handoff to Simpson on the right side. He trucks a guy all the way down for a 9-yard pickup. Here we are, second and one, Grant. Pass, wide open guy, it is green. As he will connect for 9 and gets up the Michigan State first. Second and five, hands off Simpson. He's going to get stopped in the backfield for minus three yards. And they'll bring up a third down and eight for Sparty. Third and eight, Grant pass incomplete. It'll be fourth down and they'll have to settle for a field goal attempt. Here is the field goal attempt. It is up and it is good for three zeros. We'll take it into the studio. Here's an update from the studio and Reese Davis. An update on the game at University Park. We've got a tight one going on here. The Nittany Lions are on top, 3-0. In another game, let's check out what's happening in A squared. And for Rutgers, they get into the end zone first through the air. The Scarlet Knights are on top, 7-0. Here is the play. ensuing kickoff and after the field the goal. Great kick. And kickoff is to Quinn. Left to side, here he goes. He got the man to beat. Here goes Glenn Quinn on the left side of the field. All the way into the end zone for a touchdown. This is second straight game with a kickoff return for a touchdown for Glenn Quinn. Another 100 yards for him. Ensuing play. Here's Michigan State handoffs to Simpson as he gets 11-yard pickup. And he'll pick up the Sparty first down. Second and 12. Grant. Pass. The Landry as he'll connect for a first down all the way down to the 42 yard line for a 14 yard pickup. Here we go. Second and three. Pass is intercepted by Parham. Here he goes on the right side of the field. He'll go all the way down to midfield as Illinois gets their third straight game with an interception. Third and nine after a couple bad plays. Foster. Pass. To his main man, Parker, who's been connecting all season long as well as last season for a 20-yard pickup. And he gets the fighting Illini first. Third and 13. Foster halfback screen to Quinn. As he'll break a couple tackles, but it'll be short. As it'll be fourth and 15 as we'll have to make a decision here. 
Here is the field goal attempt that is up and far to the right and no good. As a missed opportunity. After a quick three and out for Michigan State, Foster pass. The Parker again as he connects for 19 yards and they'll pick up the Illinois first down. First and 10. Hands off to Quinn. Here goes Quinn as they'll pick up a first down again for Illinois. This time for 11. First and 10. Play action. Foster. Pass. Parker again as they'll get it inside the 25 for a 27 yard pickup. Second and 10. Foster in the pocket. Pass intercepted by Kane. Intercepted by Michigan State as Illinois with another turnover this season. Here is Grant on third and six. Halfback screen to Simpson as he will get it. Here he goes on the right side. He's at the 50. He's at the 40. The 31 man to be on the right side of the field will get tackled inside the five for a gain of 74 yards. First and goal hands off as he's going to be stopped right there on second and goal. Second and goal here. Simpson, who will march his way in the end zone for the touchdown as Michigan State will take the lead here in Champaign. Third and six now after a quick three and out for Illinois. Under men's go, it's Sanchez is going to sack him as they will call timeout and hopes to get one more opportunity. Here we go, second and 10, what's under 20 seconds. Foster, he got some man deep, he catches it, it is Carter. On the left side as he will be all the way into the end zone for the touchdown for Illinois. It is 73 yard touchdown pass. As the extra point is good for a four point lead as we'll take it back into the studio for the update. And that will be halftime with Illinois with the 14 at 10 lead against Michigan State as we'll be back as we'll take it to the halftime show. Guys, take it away. We played 30 minutes. Glad to have you with us on the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 halftime show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. David Pollock and I here in the studio to break down everything that just happened in your game. One thing has been apparent in this first half that we just saw. Both defensive coordinators a step ahead of their counterparts on offense. They've had the answer for every formation, every shift, every movement, every motion that they tried to come up with. So, to try to break free and get something moving on offense, might it be time to show a little trickeration? A little trickeration never hurt nobody. I mean, it's, it's something that if you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. And you got to find a way to do something a little bit different because it wasn't working. Let's find some new plays in that book. Let's, let's run a little bit of option. Let's run us a reverse. Let's run some double passes. How about we bring a blitz with everybody? Just don't even cover anybody. Just bring everybody. Bring the house. You know, try to do something a little bit out of the ordinary. Try to get a spark going for your ball club. David and I will be keeping an eye on your game and everything else going on in the country here in our palatial and comfortable surroundings in the studio. The best seat in the house belongs to Brad Nessler and Kirk Herbstreit. Here we go after a quick three and out the start. The opening possession as Collins absolutely trucks a guy after a gain of nine yards. Here we go. Second down and ten. Grant. To throw, got some man again. It is a green for the first down. Second and nine. Grant to throw the pass. Intercepted by Logan. As he laterals it on accident. As he gives it to Green. And here Green goes all the way down. As Michigan State will get a lucky play. As it is another turnover for Illinois. The second of the game. Here we are on third and goal after the mistake. Here is Simpson. He's going to march his way to the end zone for the touchdown. It's a two-run score. Here we go. First and ten. Foster. Pass down deep again. It is Carter again as he brushes right by his defender for the touchdown for Illinois. As they answer right back against Sparty. Another deep touchdown pass. First and ten. Simpson. 
Here he goes. He will get a first down play. That's a gain of 12 yards around the 36-yard line. Here we go. First and 10. Grant. Bay's going to get sacked on the play by Parsons. Good defensive play there by Illinois. Second and three for Illinois after the Michigan State three and out. Foster. He's going to rush. He's going to fumble on the play. Recovered by Weldon of Michigan State. And that will be Illinois' third turnover of the game. Here it is on second and nine. Grant. He's going to get sacked by Ward as Ward's monstrous season continues for Illinois' 10th sack of the season. Third and 17. Here's Grant. Here he goes. Pass to his wideout for 14 yards. And they'll be fourth down. They're going for it on fourth down. Grant, pressure was coming and they're not going to get it as they're going to turn it over on downs. First and 10. Hands off Quinn. Here goes Quinn, left side. Inside the 10, all the way down. Outside the 10, close to the 12 yard line with a run by Quinn, a 44 yard pickup for the line eye. First and 10, hands off to Quinn, left side. All the way for an eight yard pickup. First and goal, hands off Quinn, touchdown fighting a line eye. As they increase their lead even more. Michigan State down 12, laddles at the number 20, Simpson the running back, here he goes. And so get a decent pickup of 15, and he'll pick up the first. First and 10, down 11, Grant pass to Garcia. He'll get a nice play of 19 yards. Second and 10, Grant pass. Got a guy, it's Landry into the end zone for the 17 yard touchdown for Sparty. As they are not done yet. Here we are for the two-point conversion to make a one-possession game. is intercepted again by Logan. His second of the night. And let's take it back into the studio for another update by Reese Davis. Let's take a look at some scores from around the country. And we've been keeping an eye on this one all day. The Wolverines unleash their aerial assault and score a touchdown. Rutgers on top, 23-21. Second and 12, we're going to take a knee as Illinois will officially have their very first upset of the season. And it comes at home against a ranked opponent as they only had one win last season against teams ranked. Of course, that was the opening day last year against Florida. As this will bring this broadcast to a close here in Champaign, Illinois. As the Fighting Illini remain undefeated this season, 3-0. With a fantastic game against Michigan State, winning 28-23 against the number 13, 20, 13 team in the country. Like, thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you later. Well, hey guys, we're back here. Of course, we're going to upgrade our head coach. I'm thinking about doing Roid Warrior, um, just because it makes it so your quarterback shines on the road. And doesn't get rattled by home field advantage and... Everyone knows we'll need that later on in the season. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Another another win, man. It wasn't pretty. Um, a lot of mistakes happened. Um, a lot of bad plays and turnovers. But we managed to come out on top. I guess we were just destined to win this game. Um, just a fantastic uh, performance by Glenn Quinn again. Even though it seemed like in the whole first half he wasn't able to do nothing. He had a fantastic second half. And uh, just a great game all together for over 116 yards. Of course, Parker right here. He had 22 yards uh, receiving on average. Um, of course, here's the defensive stats. Of course, we do use Brian Ward the whole season long while he is here in Champaign. He is my favorite player I probably ever used in a college basketball game. So it was really fun to use that and uh, use him. As we'll continue just to look down. Um, one thing I will say. Is I'm trying something a little different today. Um, after I get done talking, um, I will do a post-game show. There's some fun idea I thought about to uh, maybe spice up the video a little bit. I don't know. Um, it'll be at the very end of the video. I think it's about seven to eight minutes long. And I did I did an interview with myself in three different forms. Um, and I used uh, different names for every single person. So if you guys do like that and end up do liking that, make sure to go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Um, if you guys do like it, I will definitely continue to do that if it is a, a success. Um, of course, Glenn Quinn right here, another kickoff return for a touchdown. Um, in this game, I in like my whole uh, 
life of playing this game and see a football 14 I've barely ever got kick returned for touchdowns and in this season alone we have two which is crazy so it's been a fun year so far um not because we're winning but because I just like the way our team's built I feel like our team is definitely more built to win this year opposed to last year um we're actually one win away already in the season of tying our season wins from last season of course last year we went 4-12 and it was a struggle uh greg taylor was mr interception himself and it was just hard to get into any kind of rhythm and this season with foster although he didn't have a great performance this game um it just seems like this year we're just way more prepared um so yeah man so again let me know what you guys think after uh the you see the interview and let me know in the comments down below i'll definitely like to see what you guys think about it and uh, see, we're going on kicking here. Of course, Michigan State did have that uh, field goal, or he, there he went one for one. And I'll talk a lot more in depth, as you'll see about when the coach speaks red orange. Um, I'll talk way more in depth into this game. So I hope you guys enjoyed the post game show. Let me know again what you guys think in the comments down below. And I will see you guys talking normally uh, next Saturday against Iowa. See ya. Really quick, I actually forgot about this part. <laughs> um, here's just another quick stat update as well. It is a, uh, just normal stats uh, all together between both teams. So, again, hope you guys enjoy. Make sure to like and subscribe. And take it away, Jim Short. Again, just kidding. <laughs> um, here's the top 25, of course. I can't forget this. I know you guys do like seeing all these other random stats. So, here's the top 25, of course. I've seen a couple of Big Ten teams. Michigan State. Uh, of course, is number two after losing to us. Uh, here is the additional. I'm surprised we're not on there after that win against Michigan State. But I can't do nothing about it. We'll just try to continue to win. Um, let's go ahead and look at conference standings from both sides after the first week of conference standings. Of course, we are number one in the leaders division. Michigan did lose, by the way, to Rutgers. And I believe that's Rutgers' like, first win in the Big Ten, I think. I'll have to look back and see what the record was last year, I'm pretty sure. But it's never too good in this game when they come here. Um, Heisman Watch, I'm going to assume Johnny Manziel is number one, like usual. Of course, uh, I do want to see Glenn Quinn on here at some point And not have five different quarterbacks at once. That would definitely be awesome. Uh, championship Contender. Of course, this year they have us at 39th ranked. Finishing, so... Then have us taking a big downfall afterwards. Well, we're going to prove the doubters wrong. Uh, players of the week, of course. The same as we always do it. Here is the two players of the week. Offensive and defensive for week four. Wondering, I did have a bye at one point. That's why I only played three games and there's four weeks so far. Um, home field advantage. The toughest places to play. I assume we're still on here. Last time, we dropped one spot to number 50. So, let's see if we're still on here. And, yep, we're number 50. So, hope you guys enjoyed the post-game show. Last time, I promise I won't mess up anymore. So, hope you guys, again, did enjoy um, just this normal part. If you don't want to uh, watch the post-game show, um, this is my final outro, I guess, before the post-game show does officially start. Um, so without further ado, man, if you guys didn't enjoy, make sure to go ahead and leave a like and comment down below. Let me know you guys didn't enjoy. And if you're new, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the bell for post notifications. Let you know every time I do upload a video. Check the link in the description for links to the playlist, my other social media pages, and all my other channels as well. I do post on other channels as well. Without further, man, take it away. Post game show with Jim Short. Welcome for joining. My name is Jim Schwartz. Today, we've seen a fantastic day. And we've seen the Illinois Fighting Illini take victory over the number 13 team in the country, the Michigan State Spartans. Today, we're going to be joined with our very own Larry Blackman as he will interview the head coach of the Fighting Illini, Red Orange. Larry? Well, thank you, Jim. So I am here with Coach Red Orange. He is the Illinois Fighting Illini football coach. This is his second season. And a pretty successful one as he is 3-0 and zero. Um, so far this season, of course, with the victory today at home against Michigan State. Now, uh, Coach, we got a few questions 
um, that we're going to just ask you if you don't mind. The first question is, how do you feel your team played today? Yeah, I felt like we played really well um, today. Um, I was telling the team uh, kind of at halftime how we need to focus more on a lot of these drives because we left a lot of points off the board. Um, as you've seen how we missed the uh, field goal attempt that could have put us up 10 to 3 against Michigan State. That was huge that we missed. Um, when we got that interception and uh, and we went down the field and we threw our own interception, that's 10 points at least at the most or uh, 6 points at the very least that we left off the field. So I told the team, you know, we just have to struggle uh, or stop struggling to score points but try to get as many points up as we can. Um, against Michigan State because they're known for easily, you know, that program. They're so, so well coached and they're known for scoring so many points uh, quickly they can. So we did a good job, um, I think, in the second half of limiting our mistakes. Of course, you had that bad play um, where we got the interception and you lateraled it. So um, I had a long talk with him on the sidelines. But yeah, it was just, a, I think we played really well. Um, I think that there's a lot of things that we can do better, obviously and um, that we will fix in the upcoming weeks. Okay, awesome. Um, the second question is, what your, what is your year outlook for this season? We know last year um, you made a bold prediction that your team would go, uh, I think, seven or eight wins altogether. Uh, what is your outlook this season for the Illinois Fighting Illini? Since you already have three wins already, what's like your season goal of what you think this team can accomplish? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Last year I did um, I did predict seven, eight wins. Um I think this year I'm honestly going to say the same. Um, and I don't say that to sound cocky or I don't say that for anything else. I just say that because I see the way our team is structured this season. And our defense is so much better than last season. They had a whole year under my belt when I'm re-coaching that we're able to click together. And they're used to me and my coaching staff as well. Um, I, I look at uh, Brian Ward, you know, someone who had a fantastic year last year. And look at him this year. I think he has 11 sacks already in three games. That's absurd. You know, not many people actually get that many sacks this season or career, let alone in three the first three games of the season. Um, so I think this outlook here, we're, I, I project us to win seven, eight games. There's a lot of winnable games I can see us doing. I can see us winning next week. It'll be our first uh, road uh, game of the season against Iowa. It'll be a tough one, but I feel like we can win that. Games against Indiana. And uh, Rutgers, uh, a couple teams like that who I feel like we if we put together an amazing game, we can come out with wins. We're already three now, so we'll see what the uh, season looks like. So this game against Michigan State, you had a lot of offensive struggles, I guess you can say, um, with uh, Foster. He wasn't able to throw as good. He was 6 for 14 altogether from the field uh, throwing-wise. Uh, and then Quinn kind of struggled that whole first half going into the second half. Uh, how, how do you think that you can kind of come over these offensive woes after the first two weeks you were dominant against both FCS schools and you're able to get a lot of rushing yards, of course, and a lot of dominant points versus this game you struggled the whole first half scoring. Foster didn't seem like he was really into it at all this game. And uh, he only had really two touchdowns from really deep throws. How do you feel like uh, your offensive struggles you can try to stop coming up in the rest of the season? Yeah, we had a lot of offensive struggles. Um, I was talking to Foster a lot. Just on the sideline, and one thing I told him is just to keep his head up. You know, have a one bad play happens, you know, ha delete that from your memory. You don't need to have that continue to be on your head every time you go out for the next possession. You keep looking forward. Every drive's a new drive. You know, every every time you snap the ball is a different play. Um, so no matter if you did a bad throw of the play before, you know, next time, you know, try your hardest to do as best as you can out there. Um, I told Glenn Quinn, you know, just keep your head up too. It's kind of his first game that he struggled a lot in the first half and he looked a little down. So I reminded him, hey, you're the best running back in the nation. And I truly believe that he's the best running back in the nation. So I told him, hey, keep your head up. Your time will come this game where you will dominate. And look what happened in that second half. He's able to dominate. He had about, what, 116 yards altogether. So he did a fantastic job. Um, I told my kicker, no worries. It's your first missed field goal of the season. And, uh, you know, we're already doing better last year than at our field goal. So I just told everyone to keep their head up. You know, often the struggles comes no matter what team it is. And I uh, feel like we played really well in that second half. All right, Coach, in our final one. Um, so your defense this whole season has been dominant. You were first coming into this game in rushing yards. You were, you know, top 20, I think, and, uh, and passing defense 
you were able to shut Michigan down, Michigan State down in so many different possessions throughout the whole game. A lot of third downs you were able to do, a lot of stops you did. You made a punt over four times. Um, what was it that you were able to do defensively against Michigan State that that causes you guys to come with a victory and them not even scoring 30 points a game, which they're accustomed to this year? What is your uh, opinion on that? Yeah, our defensive dominance was absolutely fantastic. Um, like you said, we're the first team um, in the country at rushing defense, which that obviously dropped today. They were able to rush the ball really well in that first half. Um, by feeling the second half and the whole game, really, we were able to dominate on third down. I feel like they didn't complete over five uh, third down plays, which was fantastic for us to do. Um, so I feel like we were able to have a really good job on uh, third down. And a lot of plays where we were able to not have them do touchdowns, but field goals. Like that first drive looked like they were going to come all the way down the score. And how we are able to just stop them and, uh, and make them uh, at least do a field goal attempt. So I feel like our defensive dominance was really well as well this game. Well, Coach, we'd like to thank you for coming into the studio and just sharing a little bit of your time today. Um, his name is Red Orange. He is the coach for the Illinois Fighting Illini uh, this season. He is currently 3-0 and zero as he continues uh, to coach Illinois in his second season. My name is Larry Blackman, and I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in. We'll send it back to Jim Short in the studio. Well, thank you, Larry. We'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to go drop a like and leave a comment down below. Let me know you guys did enjoy the video. Um, if you're new, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the bell for post notifications. Let you know every time I do upload a video as well. Check the link in the description below for links to the playlist as well as links to my other social media pages and my other channels. I do post on other channels as well. Also, comment down below, man. What do you guys think about this whole look? Um, just something I thought about and just fun, something fun to do. So, without further ado, I'll catch y'all later, man. Deuces.